One man has dominated the news for the last number of months. You, you, and you could not escape him. Donald Trump. <laughs> now, as a psychologist, there is much about Donald Trump that I find very interesting. But today, I'd like to talk about one story in particular. Now, a few months ago, Donald Trump made headlines all over the world when he claimed that he clearly remembered seeing on television thousands of Muslims on a New Jersey rooftop on 9-11, celebrating the fall of the Twin Towers. Now, there's no evidence that this ever happened, and Donald Trump was widely criticized for telling such a lie. Now, I'm not a Donald Trump supporter, but today I'm going to try to convince you that while what he said wasn't true, he may not have been trying to lie. Because what if I told you that every single one of your memories is, to a degree, a lie? What if you couldn't trust a single thing you're seeing inside your head? Our memories lie to us all the time, and they do so for two main reasons. The first is how we experience the world, and the second is how we make and then maintain our memories. So to illustrate the first one, I'm going to give you a demonstration. I'm going to show you a photograph of some graduates in University College Cork, and they're all throwing their graduation caps up in the air. And I just want you to look at this picture for a couple of seconds, and I want you to count how many hats are up in the air. Just count the hats, OK? So how many hats? Nine. 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 Wonderful. So you all looked at the picture, you paid attention, you counted the hats, and you made a memory. That's exactly how it's supposed to work. But now I'd like you to try and picture what you just saw in your head. You're seeing graduates, you're seeing some grass, some hats, some stone buildings. But how many of you are also seeing a monkey? This is a <laughs> so this is a really simple demonstration of how our attention doesn't really work like we think it does. This is called inattentional blindness. And it happens when our attention is so engaged in one thing, we miss something that happens right in front of us. And this happens to us in everyday life all the time. As part of my PhD, I study attention and memory using a driving simulator. And in this particular study, I had people listen to something on the radio that I knew would draw their attention, and then drive past this enormous elephant next to the road. And 75% of people did not see this elephant. And this seems really funny. When it's an elephant or it's a monkey, it seems amusing. But this is really problematic when we think about memory. Because for every person that drove past that elephant without seeing it, when I asked them to recall what the drive was like and what they saw, they're missing this huge piece of information. Their memory is a lie. And when we think about what this means in the real world, this throws up even bigger problems. Because what if that elephant was Stephen Avery, a man accused of murder? You're the only one who drove past him that afternoon, the only chance he has for an alibi. You don't remember seeing him, and your faulty memory puts him in jail for the rest of his life. When we make a false memory like this, when we put someone in prison, when we forget that we saw something like an elephant, it's not our fault. We're not choosing to lie. In fact, it's our memories that are lying to us. And lying is a pretty strong word. But I say lying because when I showed you that picture, this is what you saw. This is what I showed you the first time. But a lot of you didn't notice that monkey, didn't take it in. And so what did your brain show you when you tried to recall what you saw, when you tried to rebuild the image in your head? It didn't show you this though this is probably an honest version of what you actually saw. Our brains don't show us images that are filled with holes and gaps, and we just couldn't function if it did. Instead, you probably saw something like this. Your brain uses context, experience, any other information that it has to hand to build a sensible image to show you. But sometimes, that sensible image is downright wrong. And that's a way that we can have false memories. But that's unlikely to be the cause of Donald Trump's false memory. Instead, I think he fell victim to problem number two, which is how we make and then maintain our memories. So I'm sure most of you know your memories are stored in the brain. But they're not single static objects. They're not things that we can take out and read and then neatly put back in place like a library book. Instead, all of your memories are networks, series of neurons that fire together to create every single memory that you have. When you recall an event from your past, 
each of the neurons involved in this network activate in a particular pattern that rebuilds this memory. You reconstruct each memory that you have when you want to look at it. You build it all over again. And for anyone who's ever tried to put together IKEA furniture, as you will know, what a lot can go wrong in a building process. But let's imagine, <laughs> let's imagine that this is Donald Trump's memory for 9-11, a highly simplified fictional network that we're looking at. And imagine each of these yellow dots is a piece of that memory. So where he was that day, what the weather was like, who he was with. And on the news that day, there was a widely circulated clip of a number of people in Palestine. And they were celebrating the news of these attacks on America. And so that's part of this network too, he has this network. But because of the reconstructive nature of memory, our memories can change often in response to information that we learn after the fact. New information contaminates the network and makes it so that the memory is different, but we don't really know why. And in the days following 9-11, there was some news coverage of the arrest of a number of suspects on a rooftop in New Jersey. And these suspects were reported to be Muslims. And because of the reconstructive nature of memory, it's entirely possible that this new piece of information fuses with this network this is competing and conflicting with the information about Palestine, and so the information about Palestine simply gets kicked out of the network. This memory is now completely changed, but Donald Trump has no idea it's happened. And as we saw earlier, he's not seeing gaps or holes in his memories that would clue him into the fact that something has gone wrong. So you might be thinking at this point, this is terribly convenient <laughs> for someone like Donald Trump to have a false memory that so clearly supports his political beliefs and his rhetoric. But in fact, this is exactly what we'd expect to happen. In one study, thousands of people were shown doctored images of either President Bush or President Obama engaged in some kind of scandal. And they were asked if they remembered that scandal happening. And they found that Democrats were more likely to remember the President Bush scandal, and Republicans were more likely to remember the President Obama scandal, despite the fact that neither of these things actually happened. Information that fits our belief system seems to more easily integrate into these pre-existing networks, making the formation of a false memory all the more likely. So I'm hoping, at this point, you're all with me, and you're thinking, okay, maybe Donald Trump had a false memory, maybe we should believe you. But here's the thing. Even knowing all that we know about memory and how they're created and how they can change, it's so hard for us to let go of the illusion that our memories work like a video camera. I see this every day in the lab with my own eyes, my own data, how bad our memories can be. And yet I'm just as likely to get in an argument with someone because I definitely remember that that thing happened. And a few weeks ago, I read an article in the Washington Post which summarized this area of, of false memory research and how this could happen to Donald Trump. And I thought it was great. It was really well written and it communicated science in a really clear way. And I thought this is gonna change how everyone thinks about memory. And then I made the crucial mistake of reading the comments. <laughs> and one after another, they're all like this. <laughs> Somehow suggesting that false memories are still voluntary. That if you have one, you're kind of probably still lying or a bit crazy. <laughs> and so I'm asking you, don't be like these guys. I'm asking you to not just understand, but actually embrace this new reality of human memory. Because we need to become critical consumers of our own minds. You should be skeptical of things that you see in your head and be aware that it's always at least a little bit wrong and there could be any number of elephants or monkeys hidden in there somewhere. <laughs> and we need to learn to just cut each other some slack, not to automatically brand someone a fantasist or a liar if they say something that turns out to be untrue. And I think that if we can accept this mountain of scientific evidence that we can all learn to be a little kinder and more understanding of ourselves, those around us, and yes, even Donald Trump. <laughs>